Hi guys and welcome to lecture 8 of Python programming with me, Mace. So in this lecture we're going to continue off from the last lecture where we talked about if, elif and else, which are the three conditions that we'll be learning about in this course. So we're going to be continuing off from there and we're going to be doing a uh, practice question at the end of this video uh, to talk about uh, the actual power of conditions. As well as that we're just going to be going over the nesting of um, conditions which we'll talk about later in the video. But right now, we're going to actually go over the operators you could use. So, let's say we have this variable called x, and it's 7. And let's say we have a variable y, which equals 8. So we can do a bunch of if statements for this. Let's do the first one. If x plus y... So we're going to start with the first operator, not equals to. Oh, whoops, that's, that's wrong. Not equals to. So that's the not, the exclamation mark. Then you're going equals to. So what is going to check if not equal to? And let's do not equal to 15, because this does equal to 15, so it's going to return false. Print does not equal to... Equal to 15 else we want to print print equals to 15 so if x plus y not equal to 15 then it will print does not equal to 15 else equals to 15 and if we check this now type hello this is just for a later part, I just put that there, equals to 15, and it does equal to 15, x plus y equals to 15. So now, now that we've done that, let's do another one. If x plus, what's the plus, x plus y, um, if x plus y equals to, so this is equals to now. However, we have learned about equals to in the last video. It's literally the same as not equals to, except for equals to. So we won't go over that. What about x plus y is greater than? So x plus y is greater than, greater than 12. Then we wanted to print the value of x plus y is more than 12. And so... Now, the value of x plus y is more than 12, because, yeah, x plus y bigger than 12, if, though. Else, else, print, print, oh, whoops, x plus y is either equal to 2 or more than Twelve. Oh, I mean less than twelve. Sorry. Twelve. Um, why we're we doing that? Because it's like that. So if we go here, type hello, which is just for our next part. B equals to fifteen. True. The value of x plus y is more than twelve, and that's true. It's more than twelve, so it never went to that else. So equals to fifteen. Equal uh, more than twelve. Now let's go on to our next operator, which is less than. So let's just copy and paste this because we're literally going to be writing the same code over. Except for the other way around. So now it's going to be less than 12. Because if x if 12 is bigger than x plus y, then the value of x plus y is less than 12. And then we can do more now. And now if we run this type below b the value of x plus y is more than 12 x plus y is either equal to or more than 12 so as you can see oh n equals to 15 that's the start so now that we've gone over that let's go and do our next one which is equals to so if x plus y uh, greater than or equals to 12 the value of x plus y is 12 or more 
So that's the difference. It's not more than 12, it's 12 or more. And if it isn't, it's less than 12. So not, it's like that. Because it's just equals to, it adds the number. And if we do that on the next one, x plus y equals or less than 12. So if 12 is bigger than or equals to x plus y, so remember x plus y is 15, then the value of x plus y is more than 12. No, it isn't. It's less than 12. That is wrong, though. Because remember, we're putting equals to. So it's actually the value of x plus y is 12 or less. Sorry, 12 or less, not 12 or more. Is either equal to... No, remember, is more than 12. And now, if we have done our code right, all of these should return... Oh, wait, wait a second. Why is that wrong? Oh, yeah, because we put these the wrong way. Equals to... There you go. So remember not to put them the wrong way. I, I didn't even realize that. Type hello. So that's just the stop. So equals to 15. Correct. So we got that correct. The value of x plus y is more than 12. So it's 15, yeah? x plus y is either equal to or more than 12. Correct? The value of x plus y is 12 or more. Correct? x plus y is more than 12. So all these commands, it's shown that it's right. And these are just the really simple commands that will help you. Um, in if statements. Now we're going to go from some more abstract things. So let's get rid of all of this. Bye bye code. And uh, this is uh, wh where our type hello thing. Oh wait, no. just don't mind the practice here. It's just for the end of the video. So this is where our type hello thing begins. So we want to check if we want to check if so it says type hello, but we want to check if the result if the result is hello, then it is going to print, uh, if it's going to print hi back. Because, yeah, uh, you want your computer to say hi to you, right? When you say hi to it. So, if, if, so first, what we do to uh, check if something is in that string, we do hello, if hello in A. So, A is that. Then, we will print Oh, whoops print let's be kind here hi and if that's correct we'll print this so have type hello hello hi but let's rerun this program and do something a bit different type hello hello it doesn't work we literally did nothing different except uh, different except for change the cat uh, the um, the, uh, the capitalization. So what we actually do there is we do or. So if hello or hello in a, then it will do that. We could also do if hello in a or he hello lowercase in a. But this is quicker. So if we do that now, type hello, hello, it do hi. Now what about if we do lowercase hello? This is this is. Where it comes in. Hi! So it does it for both. What about if we want to check if hello... Oh, whoops. Why does it keep doing that? <laughs> if hello and hello. So you now... If hello and computer... If hello and computer in A. So F5, run. So now if we do hello... It's not going to do anything. We need to do hello computer. Um, hello computer. Ah, so you'll only do it if you're kind to him. Yeah. That's just how the computer is. Yeah. So that's and. Now we're going to go into not. If not. So we learnt about not. We've learnt about these logical operators in binary. If not hello in A, G, it will print it. Actually, no, let's do by because you'd never actually type hello. So what this does is if hello is not in, yeah, it's just weird how we put the not first, but 
if not hello in A, so if hello is not in A, then it will print by. So if we do R, R, it says by. So now we're going to be, now that we've finished that, we're going to be going over to nesting. So let's just say if hello or hello. Yeah, in a print, print what is, so I'm going to go over what this is actually. So name. So this is nesting. And what nesting is, is when you put an if statement inside another. We can also do this with loops, which is the next chapter. So if um, if hello in a, then it should it print it asks for your input, which I just realized I did not put in. What is your name? What is your name? Oh, whoops! I put semicolons, and I did something really weird. Yeah, really weird. So what is your name? Uh, if name equals mace or a oh, whoops or mace whatever way they capitalize it even though they should in theory be doing it uppercase but whatever if name equals mace or lowercase mace then it should print hi oh whoops hi your name is mace too Oh, and we should also do hi here because you did put hello. So hi, what is your name? So now if we run this, type hello. Hello there. What is your name, Mace? Hi, your name is Mace too. So what it did is it will only run this if statement if this if statement is true. It will not run this if statement. Even though it's an if statement, it will not be run unless this is true because it's in the indent, the indent. So let's try a different case. What if we did type hello and we did G? Hi, what is your name? Mace. Hi, your name is Mace too. So how come I put G in, but it didn't work? Okay, so what if we actually change this to just hello in A? Okay, so I'm just gonna show you that. If hello in A and I do G, it does nothing. And the thing is, because it also checks this hello right here. Yeah. Now let me just close the other window. Okay. So that wraps it up for our nesting as well. So nesting is just when you will only run the if statement if, um, if the other if statement uh, is run. So if this is run, then this will run. If this is not run, then it will skip and it won't do anything here. Even though this is an if statement. Remember how I said an if statement will always be run. Well, it won't be run if it's another if statement that's depending on it. Okay. So now, let's go on to our practice, which I've moved all the way down here. We. Yeah. Okay. Practice one. Write a program that determines the cost of your train ticket. This should use the following conditions. If the distance is less than 10 km, your fare will be $2.50. If the distance is between, we haven't done between yet, but I'll show you how we can do that. 10 km and 25 km, your fare will be $5. If the distance is greater than 25 km, then your fare will be the distance divided by 4. Okay, so I encourage you to uh, try this by yourself. Pause the video and try it. Otherwise, we'll be uh, doing this... Uh, I'll be doing this. So I encourage you just to pause the video. Okay, so practice one. So let's just get rid of this. Write a program that costs that determines the cost of the train ticket. So first we want to ask how far are you traveling? Because the cost is determined by your distance. So Distance, oh, whoops, equals integer input. So remember, this is an int input, which I've taught. Um, it will only accept integers. So int input, what distance will you be traveling today? 
today. Oh, whoops. And so now, we just close that because there's two parentheses. Remember, you close however many parentheses you open. So, distance. Actually, I'm just going to add something here. Def cost. So, this is just a, a function. We'll learn about what they are um, in upcoming chapters, but I'm just using it because it organizes your code. So, def cost. Distance equals int inputs. So, what distance will you be traveling today? So, now we start our if statements. If distance is smaller than 10, all right? Print your fare today will be, and how much is it? $2.50. $2.50. Okay, so that's easy. Now we got to do elif. So remember, elif is just if this doesn't work, go on to this. But it isn't like an else, it isn't last resort. So elif, and you can put parentheses unlike else because it's elif lf distance so this is between we don't have something like between to help us we just do if distance is greater than 25 kilometers so if distance is oh whoops is greater than 10 kilometers and so we don't do uh, we don't have to do between we can just do and and distance is smaller than 25 kilometer your fur will be your fur will be how much will it be it will be five dollars so print oh whoops <laughs> your fur will be five dollars very expensive trade by the way <laughs> so that's between so we're checking if it's greater to, than 10 and less than 25 so it's it's 11 to 24 oh wait we could actually do greater than or equals to so it will be 11 oh yeah and we can put the equals there as well so it will be 10 to 25 so this will be less than 10 0 to 9 this will be 10 to 25 and the next one is more than 25 so else now we do else else we don't have to do anything we don't have to do greater than 25 else um print so there's two ways of doing this remember it's going to be distance divided by four so print your fur is distance divided by four we could do that and that is by far the easiest way or we could just create a new variable called extend wait let's just get rid of this your fur is extended fur and we could just create a um variable called uh, extended fur equals distance divided by four but it is by far way easier to just do distance divided by four so that's our program it's really simple really easy and it doesn't involve any nesting though it's just really simple so we i hope you've tried the the uh, practice so let's actually see how it works oh wait wait one more thing because i made a function i need to do cost So I'll, to, I'll talk to you about what functions are later. So what distance will you be traveling today? I'll be traveling 12 kilometers, thank you. Your fare will be $5. Jeez, that's expensive. So let's do that again. Uh, what distance will you be traveling today? 10 kilometers. And your fare will be $5. Because, remember, we did equals to 10. So yeah, it's just a really expensive like system right there. Now what distance will you be traveling today? Uh, so we've done... Oh, yeah, we need to do less than. So we'll do four. And it's $2.50. Now we do one more. What distance will you be traveling today? In fact, 
Um, I feel like I should be traveling 40, 47 kilometers. Now let's do something divisible by four. 44 kilometers. You can only concatenate. Oh, whoops. Uh, I forgot one more thing. Do, 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 do. Yes, okay, you can only combine strings with strings. You can't do strings with numbers. So what distance will you be traveling today? 44 kilometers, thank you. Your fare will be $11, because remember, it's 44 divided by um, 4. Now let's do something that is a decimal. So, for the uh, 45, and that's $11.25. In fact, we can even make this, like, look better by doing a dollar sign here. And that will just, what distance? 56? Eh, $14. So, that's our practice, and that just wraps it up for this video. So, we've been we've talked about nesting and um, the different operators you can use with if statements. So, that actually does wrap it up for this chapter on if statements, a pretty short chapter, even though we'll be coming back to if statements in the following chapters, uh, such as functions, classes, and so on. So, I uh, hope to see you in the next video. Bye!